The Bennets Mr. and Mrs. Bennet had five daughters, Jane, Elizabeth, Mary, Catherine and Lydia. The family lived in Longburn House in the village of Longburn in Hertfordshire. The little town of Meryton was a mile away. The Bennets, though not rich, were very comfortably off, but their easy circumstances would continue only as long as Mr. Bennet lived, because the Bennet property was entailed. The five girls could look forward to only about a thousand pounds each from their mother, who had had a certain amount of money settled on her by her father when she married. The fine house in which they lived, and the farm which gave Mr. Bennet his income, would both, on his death, pass on to Mr. Collins, a distant cousin, but the nearest male relative. This business of the entail was a great trial and grievance to Mrs. Bennet. She could not understand it, and suspected a scheme to leave herself and her daughters penniless and without a roof over their heads on her husband's death. A cruel, unnecessary plot, she railed. Who ever heard of entailing property away from wife and daughters? If my girls don't get good, rich husbands, I don't know what will become of us. So she was always on the lookout for well-to-do bachelors, and the business of her life was to get her daughters married. Attracted by her youthful good looks, Mr. Bennet had fallen in love with her and married her. He had realized very early in his marriage, however, that his beautiful wife was extremely foolish. But instead of correcting and teaching her, so that Mrs. Bennet's manners and conversation improved with time, he merely avoided his wife as much as possible. So Mrs. Bennet went her own silly way, chattering endlessly about little things her petty problems, her imaginary ailments, the wicked entail, and how circumstances combined to defeat her. No one knows what I suffer, she would wail. Everything is against me. Fortunately, the two elder girls, Jane and Elizabeth, had only their mother's beauty. They were both intelligent, sensible, and well-mannered. Mary, the third daughter, was a plain-looking, conceited girl with a very high opinion of her own cleverness. Catherine, usually called Kitty, and Lydia were pretty but ill-mannered and pleasure-loving. They talked only of clothes, dancing, and young men. I wish Papa would control the girls, said Elizabeth to Jane. Mr. Bennet, however, was too lazy or too indifferent, or both, to bother. Distant and mocking, he devoted himself to his farm and his books, and the behavior of their three younger sisters continued to be an embarrassment to Jane and Elizabeth. The two elder girls had an additional embarrassment in their father's attitude to their mother and their sisters. The remarks he addressed to them in company not only showed he was aware of their foolishness, but drew attention to what might otherwise have passed unnoticed. At home, he treated his wife as a source of amusement. He teased her, but she did not understand his teasing. She revealed her mean, vulgar mind in the stupid remarks she made. How can Papa bear to make such cruel fun of Mama? wondered Elizabeth. He really enjoys prompting her silly answers. What happened to the love he had for her when they married? Now he treats her as casual entertainment. One morning at breakfast, Mrs. Bennet announced to her husband in some excitement that a neighbouring estate, Netherfield Park, had been rented by a Mr. Bingley. Mrs. Long told me, she cried, that the gentleman will move in very soon. He's single, young and handsome, and from the north of England, and has five thousand pounds a year. What a good thing for our girls, Mr. Bennet. You must call on him as soon as possible. Why should I call on him at all? teased Mr. Bennet. Oh, Mr. Bennet, you are so heartless said Mrs. Bennet. How can we visit him if you don't? Indeed, you must call on him. Sir William and Lady Lucas will, and Mr. Long and everyone else too. The Lucas girls and Mrs. Long's nieces are quite plain. I'm sure Mr. Bingley will fall in love and marry one of our beautiful daughters. If only you'd call on him. She continued to beg and plead every following day pointing out that with the entail over their heads and five girls to be married off, Mr. Bennet could not afford to neglect to call on any eligible bachelor. You must think of our daughters, Mr. Bennet, she repeated over and over again. Her husband only laughed and said that nothing would make him call on Bingley, 
that if Mr. Bingley wished to marry one of their daughters, he would have to do so without his help. You visit him, my dear, he said. It will be best if you go and see him and tell him all about your girls. You're heartless and cruel, Mrs. Bennet sobbed. In spite of all that he had said, however, Mr. Bennet was among the first in the neighbourhood to call on Bingley. But his wife knew nothing of this till the evening after the visit, when she was discussing a forthcoming ball with her daughters.